Queen Elizabeth's security is a topic that has fascinated people for decades, which brings us to a mind-boggling topic that will leave you astounded. How insane was Queen Elizabeth's security? From the iconic Queen's Guard to the elaborate protocols, the security measures surrounding the Queen are nothing short of extraordinary. In this video, we will delve into the shocking and unbelievable facts about Queen Elizabeth's security. Money is on the line if they smile. The Queen's Guard is renowned for their stoic and unflinching demeanor, standing silently at their posts with a serious expression. But have you ever wondered what would happen if a guard were to crack a smile or let out a laugh? The consequences of such a seemingly innocent act can be quite severe. What's your name? No. What? <laughs> is that a name? Shake of head is not a name. Please say your name. And by recess, you know, you're just this guy just hanging out. Came, his mother always picked him up from school. You know, he's that type of guy until he was 20. His mother picked him up from school. If a Queen's Guard is caught smiling or laughing while on duty, it can result in serious repercussions. In a Q&A session on Reddit, a guardsman known as Nibs123 revealed that guards can be charged a few days to a week's pay if they are caught breaking their stern facade. This financial penalty can amount to around £200, USD, a significant sum for a single offence. The strict rule against smiling or laughing serves a purpose. The Queen's Guard is a symbol of professionalism and discipline, and any display of emotion is seen as a breach of their duty. Their role is to project an image of strength and unwavering dedication to the protection of the royal family and the royal residences. The consequences of smiling or laughing for the Queen's Guard go beyond just financial penalties. It can also damage their reputation and the reputation of the entire unit. The guards are expected to maintain a high level of professionalism at all times, and any deviation from this standard can be seen as a failure to uphold their responsibilities. The no smiling rule may seem harsh, but it is essential for the guards to remain focused and alert. Their duty is not only to deter potential threats, but also to ensure the safety and security of the royal family. Smiling or laughing could be seen as a distraction or a sign of complacency, which could compromise their ability to respond effectively in a critical situation. It's worth noting that the Queen's Guard is not devoid of a sense of humor or incapable of experiencing joy. However, they must compartmentalize their emotions while on duty, prioritizing their role as protectors over personal amusement. This level of self-discipline is a testament to their commitment and professionalism. The strict enforcement of the no smiling rule is a reflection of the high standards expected of the Queen's Guard. Their unwavering composure and serious demeanor contribute to the aura of authority and respect that surrounds them. It is this unwavering dedication to duty that has made the Queen's Guard an iconic symbol of security and protection. They have to faint a certain way. Standing for long hours in the sun, dressed in heavy fur hats and thick uniforms, the Queen's Guard faces the risk of fainting and heat stroke. But even in such challenging circumstances, there is a protocol in place to ensure their safety and maintain their disciplined presence. When a guard starts to feel lightheaded or dizzy while on duty, they are trained to follow a specific protocol known as fainting to attention. This means that even when falling to the ground, they must maintain their disciplined poise and composure. You may have seen pictures of guards lying flat on their faces after fainting and this is a result of the protocol they follow. The reason behind fainting to attention is twofold. Firstly, it ensures that the guard maintains their disciplined posture even in a state of unconsciousness. This is crucial for the overall image and reputation of the Queen's Guard. Secondly, it allows for a swift response from fellow guards and medical personnel who are trained to handle such situations. In cases of fainting, guards are not left unattended. There is a system in place to ensure their well-being. Waiters assigned to the guards are responsible for their care during their shifts. On especially hot days, these waiters provide them with cool drinks to combat the effects of heat stroke. Similarly, on cold days, warm drinks are offered to keep them comfortable. The protocol for fainting and heat stroke also extends to the guards' training. They undergo specialized training to recognize the signs of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. This includes understanding the importance of staying hydrated, taking breaks in shaded areas when possible, and recognizing the symptoms of overheating. The Queen's Guard is well aware of the risks associated with standing for long hours in extreme weather conditions. They are trained to monitor their own well-being and that of their fellow guards. If a guard shows signs of heat stroke or fainting, immediate action is taken to ensure their safety. It's important to note that the guards' uniforms are designed to mitigate the effects of heat and moisture. The thick woolen material of their pants helps absorb moisture, preventing stains and reducing discomfort. Additionally, the black color of their pants helps conceal any signs of perspiration. The protocol for fainting and heat stroke is a testament to the care and attention given to the well-being of the Queen's guards.
guard. While their duty requires them to stand for long hours, steps are taken to minimize the risks associated with extreme weather conditions. The presence of waiters and the training provided to guards ensure that they are prepared to handle such situations effectively. Those guns are probably not loaded. Get back! Bye bye! Get back! The first shocking revelation about Queen Elizabeth's security revolves around the guns carried by the Queen's Guard. At first glance, these guards are always seen wielding the standard bullpup assault rifle, the light support L86 LSW carbine L22. These weapons are designed to be as intimidating as possible, with fixed bayonets at the tip, instilling fear in the hearts of potential threats. However, here's the mind-boggling truth. These guns are mostly unloaded. Yes, you heard that right. Those scary-looking assault rifles are entirely void of bullets. But why? you may ask. There are several reasons behind this seemingly counterintuitive approach. Firstly, it is to prevent any accidental discharge of firearms, especially in crowded areas where civilians or individuals of high importance may be present. The last thing anyone wants is an unintentional tragedy caused by a misfire. While the guns may be unloaded, it's important to note that the mounted bayonets can still inflict severe body damage at close range. These razor-sharp blades are not to be underestimated. They serve as a reminder that even without bullets, the Queen's Guard is prepared to defend themselves and the royal family if necessary. It may come as a surprise, but most retired Queen's Guard. Officials have admitted that they had completely unloaded weapons during the majority of their shifts. The only exception to this rule is when there is a credible threat or reason to believe that there could be an attack on a person of high interest, such as the Queen or other members of the royal family. In such cases, the guards are issued live weapons and placed on high alert, ready to neutralize any potential assassins or threats. The decision to keep the guns unloaded is a strategic one ensuring the safety of both the guards and the public. It also serves as a deterrent, as the sight of armed guards alone can be enough to discourage any ill-intentioned individuals from attempting an attack. The Queen's Guard relies on their training, discipline, and the perception of being armed to maintain security and protect the royal family. While the unloaded guns may seem surprising, it's important to note that the Royal Protection Guards, RPGs, who have a different role and responsibilities, do not follow the same rules. The RPGs are not bound by the same statute like decorum as the Queen's Guard. They are a specialized unit within the security apparatus and are prepared to use their weapons if necessary to ensure the safety of the Queen and the Royal Family. So the next time you see a Queen's Guard with their imposing assault rifle, remember that while the guns may be for display, they are a symbol of the dedication and readiness of these guards to protect the Queen and the Royal Family. The creepy reason for the hats. The story of these hats dates back to the Napoleonic Wars of 1815. During this time, the British infantry, which was exclusively made up of the Queen's Guard, faced off against the invading French army in the historic Battle of Waterloo. The French soldiers, in an attempt to appear taller and more intimidating, wore 18-inch black hats. However, the British soldiers, with their unwavering determination and overwhelming victory, emerged triumphant. As the surviving French soldiers hastily retreated, they threw their heavy hats off their heads in the process. The British soldiers, recognizing the significance of this momentous occasion, collected these 18-inch French hats as trophies of their triumph over the French forces. These hats became a symbol of victory and a testament to the bravery and valor of the British infantry. Since then, the Queen's Guard has proudly worn these hats in ceremonial gatherings to honor their victory in the Napoleonic Wars. The hats have become a national treasure, representing the rich history and tradition of the British monarchy. While the hats worn by the Queen's Guard are steeped in history and symbolism, they also come with their fair share of weight and potential dangers. These 18-inch black fur hats made from high-quality bear fur are not just a fashion accessory, they are an integral part of the Queen's Guard uniform. However, their weight and design pose unique challenges and risks for the guards. Weighing in at about 2 to 4 kilograms or 4.5 to 9 pounds, these hats are not to be taken lightly. The guards must bear the weight of these hats on their heads for hours on end, adding an additional burden to their already demanding duties. It requires immense physical strength and endurance to maintain their posture and composure while wearing these heavy hats. But the weight of the hats is not the only concern. When wet, these fur hats become even heavier, making it even more challenging for the guards to carry them. Imagine standing in the rain or snow with a soaked hat, adding extra strain to your neck and head. It's a testament to the guards' dedication and discipline that they continue to perform their duties despite these challenges. 
The design of the hats also poses potential dangers. The strap of the hat is fixed at the chin rather than below the jaw for a specific reason, to protect the guards from potential harm. In the event of an attack or forceful attempt to remove the hat, fixing it at the chin ensures that the guard's neck is not vulnerable to injury. It may sound extreme, but it highlights the importance of safeguarding the guard's well-being while maintaining the regal appearance of the uniform. Another aspect to consider is the use of real bear fur in making these hats. While efforts have been made to replicate the fur using synthetic materials for more humane reasons, the color and quality simply did not match up. This raises ethical concerns as the hats are made from hunted bears. Despite these concerns, the tradition of using bear fur has continued and the hats remain an iconic symbol of the Queen's Guard. It's worth noting that the guards are provided with thick uniforms that absorb moisture, along with black pants that don't reveal stains. This is particularly important when it comes to the hats. Guards must ensure that their hats remain in pristine condition as any stains. Or damage could detract from the overall appearance and professionalism of the Queen's Guard. The weight and potential dangers associated with the hats worn by the Queen's Guard are a testament to the sacrifices and commitment of these guards. They endure the physical strain and discomfort to uphold the traditions and protect the royal family. It's a reminder of the dedication and unwavering spirit that lies beneath the stoic and regal exterior of the Queen's Guard. Strict conditions to join their ranks. Joining the prestigious ranks of the Queen's Guard is no easy feat. The qualifications and requirements to become a member of this esteemed group are incredibly strict, ensuring that only the most qualified and dedicated individuals are entrusted with the responsibility of protecting the royal family. To be considered a suitable candidate for the Queen's Guard, there are several key criteria that must be met. Firstly, candidates must be of British descent, emphasizing the importance of national loyalty and connection to the country they will serve. While being of noble birth is seen as an added advantage, Advantage, it is not a prerequisite for joining the Queen's Guard. Since the Queen's Guard is also a military organization, candidates must pass the British Army Recruit Battery Test. Barb. This rigorous test assesses their mental and physical fitness, ensuring that they possess the necessary capabilities to fulfill the demanding duties of a Queen's Guard. The test evaluates various aspects, including cognitive abilities, problem-solving skills and physical endurance. In addition to the Barb, candidates must also meet a certain height requirement. In the past, only individuals who were at least six feet tall or the ideal 6'2 were considered suitable for the role. However, the rules have been revised to allow individuals who are a minimum of five 10 to join the Queen's Guard. This change was enacted in response to complaints from individuals who were passionate about serving their country but failed to meet the previous height criteria. It opened up opportunities for individuals who may not meet the traditional height standards but possess the necessary skills and dedication to serve in the Queen's Guard. Furthermore, aspirants must pass a series of writing, health and physical tests before being accepted into this noble rank. These tests ensure that candidates possess the necessary writing skills, overall health and physical fitness to carry out the duties of a Queen's Guard effectively. The rigorous selection process ensures that only the most qualified individuals are chosen to serve in this prestigious role. Once accepted into the Queen's Guard, members are paid based on a list of defined salaries by the British Army. This ensures that they are compensated for their dedication and service to the royal family and the nation. The strict qualifications and requirements to join the Queen's Guard reflect the level of professionalism and commitment expected from its members. It is a testament to the importance of upholding the traditions and values of the British monarchy. The Queen's Guard is not just a ceremonial presence. They are highly trained military personnel who undergo extensive training in fitness, composure, protocols, security, combat and maintenance. This comprehensive training ensures that they are prepared for any situation that may arise while on duty. The Queen's Guard represents the epitome of discipline, loyalty and honour. They are entrusted with the responsibility of protecting one of the most iconic and beloved families in the world. The strict qualifications and requirements serve as a reminder of the high standards set for those who serve in this noble role. So the next time you see a Queen's Guard standing tall and proud, remember the rigorous journey they undertook to earn their place in this esteemed group. Limited vocabulary and distinct commands. While the Queen's Guard may not be known for their oratory skills, their commands and limited range of vocabulary are distinct and effective. These commands play a crucial role in maintaining order and ensuring the smooth execution of their duties. One of the most commonly heard commands issued by members of the Queen's Guard is make way for the Queen's Guard. This clear and authoritative order is used when individuals get in the way of their march or obstruct their path. It serves as a reminder to give the guards the space they need to carry out their duties without any hindrance. Another command 
command that is frequently used is step away from the Queen's Guard. This command is issued when individuals get too close to the guards, breaching their personal space. It serves as a warning to maintain a respectful distance and avoid any physical contact. The guards are trained to respond assertively and firmly to ensure their own safety and the security of the royal family. In situations where an individual touches or attempts to touch a guard, they are permitted to step forward and yell, Do not touch the Queen's Guard. This command is a clear indication that any physical contact is strictly prohibited and will not be tolerated. It serves as a deterrent to prevent any potential threats or disruptions to the guard's duties. These commands, though limited in range, are carefully chosen to convey a clear and concise message. The guards are trained to use their voices effectively, projecting their commands with authority and clarity. The goal is to ensure that their orders are understood and followed, maintaining the decorum and security of the area they are guarding. It's important to note that failure to comply with the orders given by the Queen's Guard can result in retaliation or a show of force. While the Guards are known for their stoic and disciplined demeanor, they are prepared to take action when necessary to protect the royal family and maintain order. The limited range of vocabulary used by the Queen's Guard is intentional. It allows for quick and efficient communication, ensuring that their commands are easily understood and followed. This simplicity in language also adds to the overall aura of authority and professionalism that surrounds the Queen's Guard. While the Queen's Guard may not engage in lengthy conversations or engage in small talk, their commands and presence speak volumes. They are a symbol of strength, discipline and unwavering dedication to their duty. Their words carry weight and authority, commanding respect and adherence to their orders. They must be above the insults and provocations. The Queen's Guard faces a myriad of challenges during their duties, and one of the most significant is dealing with intimidation from the public. These guards, with their stoic and regal appearance, often become the target of various forms of intimidation, ranging from harmless jests to outright aggression. However, they are trained to handle these situations with composure and professionalism. Imagine a random stranger making fun of you because of how you dress, look, walk, talk, or respond to your surroundings. Now multiply that by the thousands of people who pass by the Queen's Guard each day. Day. These guards encounter individuals of different ages, sizes, sexes and races, each with their own intentions and behaviours. From good-natured comedians to rude and annoying pranksters, the Queen's Guard experiences a wide range of interactions. Regardless of the level of intimidation they face, the guards are expected to remain focused and steadfast in performing their duties. They must resist the urge to react or engage in confrontations, as their primary responsibility is to protect Buckingham Palace and St James Palace in London. Their unwavering Wavering dedication to their duty often means averting their focus and remaining resolute in the face of provocation. It's important to remember that the Queen's Guard is highly trained and prepared to handle such situations. Regardless of intimidation they face, they are expected to remain focused and steadfast in performing their duties. They must resist the urge to react or engage in conscience, as their primary responsibility is to protect Buckingham Palace and St. James. Their unwavering dedication to their duty often means averting their focus and resolute in the face of provocation. It's important to remember that the Queen's Guard is highly trained and prepared to such situations. While they may not like being intimidated, they understand the importance of maintaining forum and professionalism. They must rise above the instant provocations, ensuring that their focus remains on their responsibility of the royal family. The Guards often encounter individuals who attempt limits or provoke a reaction. They may face individuals who make fun of their appearance, their movements or engage in offensive behavior. Guards are trained to remain steadfast and unresponsive, adhering to their strict code of duct. While it can be challenging to endure such intimidation, the guards understand that their role requires them to rise above these distractions, maintain their composure and not allow themselves to be swayed by external factors. Their unwavering dedication and the ability to remain focused in the face of intimidation is a testament to their profession and commitment. So the next time you see a Queen's Ganding tall amidst the intimidation from the public, remember the challenges they Behind their stoic exterior, they navigate through various interactions, maintaining their commitment to their duty. Their ability to rise above intimidation is a testament to their resilient dedication to protecting the royal family. The challenge boredom. Standing mo thoughts, these mental exercises help them stay focused and pass the time while maintaining their unwavering composure.
Another way the guards entertain themselves is by quietly enjoying attempts made by people to make them laugh. While they may not show any outward signs of amusement, they appreciate the efforts made by individuals to break their stoic facade. Whether it's a funny face, a witty remark, or a clever joke, these small moments of levity provide a brief respite from the monotony of their duties. Some guards find solace in people watching. They observe the citizens and tourists around them, taking in the sights and sounds of the bustling crowds. This simple act of observation allows them to stay engaged with their surroundings and provides a form of entertainment during their long shifts. To combat the mental strain of standing still for extended periods, the Queen's guards undergo special training on how to keep their minds engaged. They learn techniques to focus their attention and maintain mental clarity, ensuring that they remain alert and attentive to their surroundings. It's important to note that the guards are trained to maintain their composure and not show any outward signs of boredom or frustration. While they may not offer a thank you for attempts to entertain them, they may appreciate the efforts made by individuals to make their shifts more enjoyable. The guards' ability to cope with boredom is a testament to their discipline and dedication. They understand that their role is not just about physical presence, but also also about mental fortitude, their unwavering commitment to their duty and the ability to stay focused, even in the face of monotony, is what sets them apart. They follow an extremely strict set of rules. When you see the Queen's Guard standing stoically at their posts, it's easy to assume that their job is simply to stand still and look intimidating. However, behind their statue-like decorum lies a set of rules that they must follow with unwavering discipline. Some things may not necessarily cause harm to the human body, but they can be very irritable and annoying. Imagine a slow and steady trickle of sweat rolling down your face, the mysterious itch you get when you haven't moved for a while, or slight cramps in your legs from standing all day. For normal humans, these sensations are easily solved with a swipe, tap, scratch or movement. But for the robot-like officers of the Queen's Guard, these sensations are a simulation of hell on Earth. Without being able to move or interact with passers-by, they must endure all sorts of uncomfortable sensations, taunts and, quite frankly, the invasion of personal space. It's not uncommon for people to stop and take pictures, crack jokes or perform a list of other actions in a bid to get a reaction from them. While they may tolerate actions like taking pictures of and with them, it's important to remember not to get too close or make physical contact. If you wanted to play the role of a good Samaritan, you could think of little entertaining things to do that might make their shift more enjoyable. However, it's crucial to respect their boundaries and not cross the line into disruptive or disrespectful behavior. The Queen's Guard follows these strict rules to maintain their composure and uphold the traditions of the monarchy. Their ability to remain calm and composed in the face of provocation is a testament to their training and discipline. It's this unwavering dedication to their duty that has earned them the respect and admiration of people from all over the world. While their role may seem monotonous and uneventful, it's important to remember that they are an integral part of the security apparatus surrounding Queen Elizabeth. Their presence serves as a visual deterrent and a symbol of the monarchy's strength and stability. Enjoyed the video? Crave more excitement? Stay tuned by clicking on any of the cards on your screen right now for more thrilling content. See you next time.